Oh. I am super, super excited to interview my next guest. This is a redo because we had an amazing interview <laughs> and Zoom for some reason decided, no, nope, not going to save it. You guys got to redo. <laughs> so Jasmine Hockius, I only met her last March, single mom, empowerment coach, founder of Kauai Girl, podcaster, Healing with Aloha. You guys have to check it out. Try <laughs> And of course, through the past year and a half, I've discovered she was her high school star cheerleader, band geek, she called herself, track star. And then in my eye, she is a social media expert. Without her guidance, her tutoring, I would not have, oh, let me just show this. I would not have recorded 100 parenting tips. Deathlin made me do that little, mom, you're not alone, <laughs> which inspired me to do two weeks of tips, which led to a hundred, which led to a hundred Facebook live, which led to a hundred Instagram lives. I didn't even do Instagram guys. And now 100 TikTok for each parenting tip is my goal. This is what Deathlin does. I mean, she is there too. <laughs> You can do it. You can do it. And then you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to conquer the world. I have that much confidence. And so here she is. Like, give her a little bit. She's like an overachiever. And then she's yeah. making How do I do the extra credit? I want to get the A plus. Yeah, yeah. The hundred. Well, how do you do? How do I do? Yeah, how do I do? <laughs> Any extra credit that I can do? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Oh, she's killing it. Like with the TikTok and um the Instagram. I was telling her, it's like, I, I go live once a week, maybe twice, but she goes live like every day, like last year. And I was like, I don't even go live every day. <laughs> Cause I get anxious. Like, I don't like people watching me. <laughs> like I, you know, my first time, like, you know, I was a cheerleader. So I used to being in front of people, but she just like goes the full mile and like cracking up like, okay, <laughs> let me try catch up. That's how successful you are in inspiring others. So my question is, how do you heal? A lot of parents, we were talking earlier that they prevent themselves or they don't realize that there are blockages and triggers. And if you do not feel, then how do you become the best parent that that is resides in you? Right. So, you know, when you think about the word healing, it's like it, it just sounds so like big. Um, for me, when I when I think about healing, um, the best analogy is like, you know, when you get a cut. Um, depending how deep the cut is, sometimes you end up with a scar. So it's healed, but you'll still see the scar. So you'll be reminded that it happened. Um, that I'll tell you guys a story. So when I was little, you know, when uh, people pack you on your bike, and so you sit sideways, uh -oh. in the front, like you're holding onto the bar, but you're sideways. Well, it's on a 10 speed bike. And I was like, I don't know, preschool, kindergarten. Anyways, we fell off the bike because my slipper, you know, Hawaii people, yes. my slipper got stuck in the tire wheels. Yeah, it was bad. And so I had to um, get taken to ER. And because I was the, it was bad. Anyway, so long story short, um, you know, it healed. And then I, I can show you the scar. It's like this big, the scar is this big, you know? And so when I think about like uh, us healing as humans, um, you know, depending on what you've been through in life, whether it's childhood trauma, whether it's like uh, a, a natural disaster, like for me, I lived through two hurricanes. Um, for some people, it was like a divorce, a relationship. Um, you know, I know some people who lost their child and whatnot. Like there's just a whole like loss of a loved one. There's so much things. And I didn't really see the need for getting help until my sister passed um and and that's when I began my my journey of grief journey through grief and then eventually I hit a point where I had to begin taking steps to heal because when I so my sister died 2001 in 2006 I was pregnant and my older sister said you, you need to go get help go see a therapist or a psychologist because when you become a parent, the things you never really dealt with is going to come up. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Right. And so 
I was having a hard time with my sister's passing and then it went in and I found out that um, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and they know it's PTSD. And a lot of it was one, my sister died unexpectedly. Um, back in 2001, she was 23. And prior to her passing, um, I, I endured a lot of trauma as a child. And so it was kind of like a, a hidden blessing, like being able to process the pain of losing her unexpectedly and then processing the pain that I, I went through that I never got any kind of therapy. By the time that I got counseling, I was 30 years old, 31, no, 31 years old. So that's 31 years of carrying a lot of pain. And so when we, like, when you talk about healing, that's the kind of healing that I'm talking about. It's like, um, it's not like a quick fix. Um, healing is not like everything's gonna suddenly vanish. Like it never happened, but you're gonna be able to um, touch the events in your life or um, the, what you, the experiences, but the pain that you feel isn't gonna be, you're not gonna be as attached to that pain. Like before when I, when I started therapy and I'll talk about things that I endured, I hadn't told anybody about these experiences, these life experiences that I was constantly crying with my therapist because it was painful to talk about things that I've never talked to anybody about because I felt shame and then I felt guilt. And so that was back in like 2006, 2007, my son was born. And then, you know, you fast forward, I ended up getting divorced with a two-year-old and then I became a single parent. And then that added on to more, you know, like, okay, now I have, I'm dealing with a, a, a divorce, a breakup. And it was, um, I think we talked about it. Like it was um, a traumatic breakup, the way it went about me breaking up with him. Um, I was living in Japan, then I had to move to Hawaii as a stay-at-home mom, so I had nothing. I started from ground zero. That year, grandma died, and then my dad died, like, a couple years later. So it was, like, it was compiling of things. Um, so from my grief journey, I felt like eventually, and it took years. It wasn't, like, right away. <laughs> it took years. Um, I, I feel like I had to get into the healing journey. You know, I acknowledge I've been through these things but I don't want it to um, hold me back from being the best version of myself as a mother. So How do you think that affected your parenting, being a mom, you know, with your son? Well, my mental health was definitely um, impacted negatively. Um, mm -hmm. I felt when he was born, I, I was scared um, because I was stuck. Um, I missed my sister a lot. And then I felt obligated to grieve and be sad but then yet here's this beautiful baby and I felt so much joy and you know he's so ah and so I felt like how do you celebrate life but then yet honor someone you love and so I had to learn like that process um so then when I kind of like okay I give myself permission I think you know maybe I was having postpartum blues because it was bad like I was having a hard time but when when I got divorced it was like Okay, I didn't expect that. That wasn't like the plan. And so, so um, I felt guilty. I felt, um, I, I remember writing him a letter saying that I just want you to know that I tried my best to keep it up. You know, like I, 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 I promise mom tried to, to make the marriage work. Look, I'm getting emotional um, because, you know, I don't think people genuinely get married to get divorced. You know, and so when it happens, you have to shift gears and your whole life changes. And, you know, you go from one idea of this is my forever to, okay, now what do I do? I felt insecure as the mom because the dad was living in Hawaii. He was living overseas and he only could see the dad once a year just because he lives so far away. And so... I had to rely on my parents, my grandparents and other people to help me. And I just was doing bad because my grandmother had died unexpectedly the same year and then my dad died. So it was like, I constantly was dealing with anxiety and feeling depressed. And then 
um, still trying to overcome like the PTSD, the post-traumatic stress disorder, because it was like, every time I would try to get back up against someone who was passing away. And I, I just, you know, um, and I felt like I couldn't be hearted um, as a mom, like be emotionally available to my son. So how did you think you handled it? I mean, because that's a lot of trauma. Then you have this little baby and it's so <laughs> overwhelming without all of that, right? When you're responsible yeah. for this raising someone, what suggestions do you have someone who's, everyone is going through something, right? Yeah. How do you raise a child feeling like, I don't know if I can do this. Not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, pray <laughs> for me, pray. Um you know, memory scriptures or look at scriptures, finding like one or two people that you can trust and confide your insecurities to and that are encouraging and loving and non-judgmental. Uh, it's okay to get therapy. Um, it's okay to talk to like someone like in your church leadership, um, a nonprofit. Um, Cause I, I, I ended up having to go to a grief support group when my dad died back in 2012, because dad died unexpectedly um, due to like a, a, a vehicle related accident. And that I couldn't eat and it was just bad for me. And so getting help, I think if we're not used to seeing our parents or grandparents or cousins getting therapy or getting help, it's like a far-fetched idea for us to get help. Um, and so like there's hotlines now that is available. Um, and then nowadays with the whole pandemic, there's a lot of companies that have like a 1-800 number for their employees or free services to, to get some kind of counseling and therapy. And so that is my suggestion. Uh, for me, my support group uh, for grief and loss is on Instagram. Um, if you look up the hashtag grief and loss, um, for me, like I would look up like, like, like sibling loss or like uh, grieving a loved one. Mm -hmm. I find my support group through um, Instagram. I just feel like people are very loving and kind and understanding of what I've been through. Um, Facebook, I haven't really found like a cozy little home, <laughs> like a group yet. Um, but I know there's people that, you know, I can, and trust and connect to. And then TikTok, I feel like there's a lot of great people on there who are very compassionate. So switching subjects, as a former helicopter mom, as you shared before, how do you <laughs> no, trust? No, two helicopters. <laughs> yeah. I see them like somewhere around there, but they're moving away because <laughs> now you recently <laughs> shared that you're able to let go Trust oh in your child's journey, even though, I mean, at 14, it's, it's like, uh, actually, no matter what age, right? You're still, as a parent, <laughs> it's hard. How did you learn to step back and say, you know what? I trust my son, no matter what, without, right. <laughs> uh, you know, like. <laughs> so, so, okay, true story. So, um, Karen and I became friends literally right when the pandemic started, yes. right? March. And she had just written her book, Mama's Gotta Let Go. And I was like, oh, ha, ha, crack it up, whatever. And so I was like, okay. So, you know, trying to understand what her book was about and like asking her, like, what does she do and whatnot? And I was like, see, because I struggle with anxiety, you know, and, you know, I'm worried, like, is he okay? Is he safe? Like, is he learning? Is he paying attention? You know, um, my, my, like, you know, as a, I'm a single mom, I only have one. So I think I, I love him, but I'm overly like concerned with him because I, I want the best for him. But um, yeah, that's just me. Like I just care, care deeply. But um, so, anyways, so Karen was talking to me about being a helicopter mom and whatnot. Because you know, I don't know about you guys, guys. Like when you know during this whole pandemic, they they're online. So I'd be like, open the door. Like, what are you doing? Are you paying attention? Are you late? Did you sign yeah. on? Yeah. What time is it? We're, how come you're not on? Oh, because we're on a uh, break or, oh, the teacher's not in. Or I go, well, how come? You? So my son would bust out his guitar, guys, and start playing his guitar. I'm like, how come you're playing the guitar? He's like, because it's on mute. Like the whole period is mute. You know, so he's just, you know, and then, and so, and then like, like, say if he goes to sleep, right, I would stay up late 
because he was staying up late. And then Karen's like, why are you staying up late? I just want him to know that I love him, that, you know, I, I, you know, I'm his mom and I, I'm, I'm here for him. And she was like, yeah, but he's in the other room. He's fine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I need to, this is death. I need to stay up till two in the morning. Why? Because I need to be the last one asleep. I need to make sure that he's asleep first. He's in his bed with his pillow yeah. on his back and that. That's what she was like. And I was like, you know, you don't realize how silly it is sometimes like what do you think a mom is is mom's job is <laughs> to someone who's more experienced who has two kids one's an adult and one's that you're like okay I'm trying to be an overachiever as a parent <laughs> and so um I had to learn to let go thank god because whew, this is a I, I thought this was going to be months and then it'd be like a full year like with this whole um homeschooling thankfully he did go homeschooling um the, the the year before so I was kind of used to him learning at home um but yeah I I'm glad she came to my life because I think honestly guys like I got pressured to get A's and B's <laughs> from my mom like you know my mom loves us and all like but the the goal is A's and B's and so with him I have to realize that you know what um his mental health is more important and that as long as he's learning and he's progressing, um, that's all that matters. And sometimes you can do your best, but the, like for English, um, he's doing his best, but maybe the teacher's style of teaching and what she thinks is a, a good standard is contradictory to what my son is, you know? And, mm -hmm. like, you know, I've read through his stuff. I, I think it's all relative. And Definitely so, relative. An A yeah. in one teacher's eyes is a C in another teacher's eyes, exactly. right? Exactly. But the yeah, parent so, wants, the parent wants like the 90 and above. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just think it's horrible for me, for me, I can't speak for other parents, for me to gauge his self-worth on his school performance. Because although like I was an honor student, um, I'm more than just a grade. Like I'm a, I'm a person, <laughs> you know, I, I like other like sports and stuff like that. I don't want to be gauged by my grades, you know? Like I'm a parents, um, mom. <laughs> how do parents understand that though when you see that c or when you see that you know god forbid a d or an f and you think oh. you're making no effort what what are you doing buddy you know well, you sometimes it could be boredom sometimes they just don't like that class sometimes i mean during the pandemic a lot of honor roll students were getting the c's or lower and it's yeah. because everyone's mental health you know, was affected. What do you tell parents who, um, it's like, no, I do not want anything lower than a B. Sorry. Well, honestly, it's always easier to encourage the kids than to convince the parent. Um, cause I, I work with parents for like 10 years with prevention, intervention, and treatment programs. Um, so I work with the youth, but, but then in some instances, like if it's prevention, I was an intervention. Um, I'm lucky to come across the parents. You can't really get parents to 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 think differently. Like you can encourage True. it, right? You yes. can give them opportunities to consider, but ultimately it, it comes from the kid um, seeing their self worth and um, them understanding like why why are you not doing good? Like, do you need help? Because that was the big big thing with Kaino. I was like, do you need help? Like you can email the teacher because he learned that in seventh grade, like you email the teacher if you have questions, if you need help, like if you need extra help because the teachers are there, they're there to support you and da, da, da. And then there are some instances when he did email the teacher, but he didn't hear back. And I mm -hmm. told him, you know, you understand, you know, you guys are going through this whole ordeal, the pandemic. And so just be patient. So, but no, he, 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 like he wasn't doing good in one of his classes. And I was like, how is that possible? <laughs> like, oh, I remember because it was a strength. The class was yeah, it was, was art. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. How come? And then what it was was he had um, he was late and he did the assignment, but he forgot to turn it in because you know they're turning in all these assignments for all classes. Oh yeah, and uploading it, taking my, photos. Yeah, of it. yeah. It's crazy. Like it is I mean, crazy. I. I, I can sit in a Zoom for business meeting for 45 minutes. I'm done. I'm done for the whole day. And then they're stuck from what, eight to two, 15. Yeah. I'm like, more power to you, buddy. 
plus homework afterwards, watching little videos and- Oh yeah. To... But I give credit to the teachers because it's not easy what they have to do this past year and hopefully they'll be able to do in-person teaching this year. So any other tips regarding um, parenting when it comes to, you know, I mean, you have the teenage years, well, you are in the teenage years, but Jess, yes. I know what it was. How do you let go knowing, like, suppose he's 18, and I know it sounds like, yeah, you know what, 18, you're on your way, but emotionally, you know, when you see, what do you see, and how are you telling yourself, you know what, I am going to let go. If he does something that, you know, some, I think a lot of it is like choosing a partner that you might not agree with or choosing any decision where a parent thinks, uh, I don't think you should do that. How do you trust that? And you, and you are helping me with that. You know what? Cause I give advice. And when it happens to me, I'm like, oh no, I, I don't want them to do this. And you're like, Karen. <laughs> She becomes my parent coach. <laughs> and it's like, how do we do that? You know, how do we trust when we know, like, it might be a, a I, not think, so good uh, outcome? I think ultimately it's their lives. <laughs> I it is. Their journey. And I don't have to give them my, I don't have to give you my approval. I just, I, when I found out I was pregnant, I wrote him letters telling him how much I loved him and how proud I was. I was of him because he had nothing to do with his achievements in this lifetime. Yes. You know, and so that's how I feel now. And I remember when he was little, um, he was what, like four or five. And, you know, the dad wasn't here and he did something that wasn't good. And I remember talking to him and he started crying and I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't even do anything crazy, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, started crying and then I was kneeling down and I looked at him because I was upset. And I said, um, I know, even when I'm mad at you, I'll always love you. That's magical. You know, you know that? I'll always love you. And, and then I hugged him. And then you could feel him just relax. And he felt okay again. And I think that is the one thing I, I want him to know that I'll always love you. When you get older, you hang with your friends. If you ever get put in a life situation, like say the friends drink and then they're drunk and then he doesn't feel safe. I'd rather him call me to pick him up than him jump in a car and put his life at risk because he doesn't want me to know he's mm -hmm. in a situation with his friends. Um, and then my mom modeled for me about um, just trusting me like she would scold me be like no act kiat when when i leave the house like kiat in filipino like to be naughty <laughs> with boys because i was boy crazy <laughs> i'll go yeah 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 but anyway um so um but but like as much as she had her own like worries she 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 let me go and you know i did make bad decisions along the way but i don't know i don't really remember her like lecturing me about my bad decisions about the dating she just basically said in middle school to me and my sisters because she has three daughters she said okay if you ever get pregnant she don't remember. i love this story i love this story she did not my mom okay so my mom's been on Kauai for like a long time so she's a quiet girl but she's originally from Oahu, by Pahu. but my mom is a titta she's a local model and this is what she said. She she doesn't waste her breath. She's very to the point. Okay. If you guys ever get pregnant, tell the police to lock me up. I'm like, what? Because when I come out, you guys can get dirty lickings. <laughs> Who says that to their kids? <laughs> but that was my that was my deterrent from ever ever getting pregnant. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to get lickings. <laughs> I mean, none of us got pregnant and, and it's all good. My mom was a young mom. She just didn't want us to repeat history. <laughs> it's so, funny. Yeah, it's, but yeah, I mean, she, she just, yeah, I made a decision one time. I was a senior in high school and I wanted to borrow her car. And she was like, if you do that, you know, the parents going to find out you're going to get busted. And, no way, I get them. She's like, okay, <laughs> I'm just telling you. Okay. She let me use the car. And the next day I got busted. And her response was like, I told you so. 
<laughs> you know, and I think kids don't realize like we were kids too at one point and we we were naughty too or, or we, we thought of naughty things or we did naughty things and so you can't pull a quick one on us but I, I you know I expect Kainoa to make decisions that aren't the best but I, I do encourage him to learn from his decisions and take responsibility because that is life and the dad yeah, and you I said it yeah, you that's just said it, like, well, because I think a lot of times parents want to prevent the hurt, prevent the pain, prevent the mistakes. But like you just said, if we prevent and stunt their growth, how do they learn, right? How do they build their resilience if we're constantly like, no, 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 you need to like stay in this little. I, you know, I'd rather you make the, the decisions that is like, oh my gosh, while I'm, he's under my roof. Yeah. So when he becomes an adult, uh, he'll trust his decision-making abilities then if I'm always telling him how to live his life, like, oh, don't do this, don't do that. Mom says this, mom says that, dad says this. Like the dad and I, um, and then he he now has a stepmom. Um, uh, we we want him to be confident in, his, in himself, but he's gonna have to make decisions that we don't agree with and that's not gonna be solid um, because that's how he's gonna learn. <laughs> you know, that's before I, powerful, I, though. That's really I wanted powerful. to like baby him, Mm -hmm. But then I was like, nah, I'm, I'm raising a boy to man. And so I, yes. I really wanted to be a gentleman and how he treats women and stuff. But then I just got to let him make decisions. Like he'll talk to us. Like we've, trust me, we've talked to him about like, everything and everything. Um, so we do talk about that. We, we do talk about college. Like if that's his desire, great. Like, cause we're both college educated, the dad and I, but if he wants to go, great if he doesn't if he wants to be an entrepreneur or he wants to work um, um for someone else that's fine you know what I mean like but he he he's aware that we just want him to be happy so one last final piece of advice because I love that it's like trust your child's journey which you always remind me when I think uh, I think I want to like <laughs> I always this remind journey. Her, my mom's so every time she describes her daughters to me I'm like okay so oh yeah I'm you like, you were one of mine yeah I'm so I'm like I, we're not going to see names, but we're my first names. is I'm the, I'm, my mom had three daughters. I'm the one who gave her the most white hair. And look <laughs> at you now. Look at you now. Your mom would be like, oh my hair. gosh. <laughs> no, I love my mom. I, I try to support as much as she can. I helped her um, with her parents before they passed. You know, I was one of like the, the main caretaker to assist my mom. <laughs> So we do change. It's just sometimes we think we do and us. trusting that sometimes they might change when we're no longer here. Sometimes we don't even know the journey, but one last piece of advice on a parent who says, but I, I just, I had one mom say, you went on vacation. I, the house would literally fall apart if I wasn't here every moment throughout oh, the no. day with my kids. And then I felt guilty that I actually went away. And yeah. then I thought, how do you trust and how do you, you know, right? If you're that kind of mom, though, what is your, I mean, no, ju no judgment, but I think it is harder when you're constantly having to, um, it's kind of like watching a, a plant grow and you're like, oh, I want to make sure that no, you know, no, no buggies get on it. And you just, you just do this. And then you, your flower can't even grow because you're like, you can only be this big. Right. <laughs> and it's like a huge tree or something. <laughs> I think um, as moms, dads, and parents, I think we got to trust that we taught them a lot and that um, all the love, all the patience, all the lessons that we taught them that they're more than capable. Uh, they're actually smarter than we give them credit for. You know, um, I'm a single mom. And so uh, I remember when I had to put him on the plane because normally um, we would have to, accompany him because you know, he was so young and then after um the dad lives on a walk while I live on Kauai so he goes well not this past year but he flies up every year by himself and so he would be accompanied by the staff yeah Hawaiian mm -hmm. Airlines staff but then when he hit I think 13 then he can go by himself without being accompanied by staff and then I was like oh my gosh he's gonna make it you know like does he know what gig to go to like you know, I, I mean, and I feel bad because I started with anxious thoughts. And so, so the dad had to go inside, wait for the escalator, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but so that is a perfect example of letting go. 
and then you know texting him taking pictures like this is what he's wearing you know what I mean this is what you look for and he gets kidnapped unless he goes on the yeah, wrong plane he, he has a cell phone text me when you get there or call me or I'm calling him like you should have been are you there yet you know and then <laughs> so it uh, talk about like letting go um yeah that is a perfect example like going on a trip but having your child jump on a aircraft um, without he, you without me and during a pandemic is oh is, yeah during the pandemic changes everything yeah so um making sure you write out everything the addresses the phone numbers make sure you know he has his phones is charged up his ipad is charged up so if he needs to get a hold of us um but just trusting him um you know and 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 checking on him and whatnot so I think um, parents, you're you're so amazing, and you're probably doing a better job at parenting your kids than you realize. And I think I learned more from my son than he learns from me. You know, I love that. And like what you just said, we did the best that we could. Yeah, your best. Let go and know that, of course, their worth is not defined by anything external: their behavior, their grades. Even then, when they disrespect you, right? Because that is part of their, like, you know, when they start rolling their eyes and you think, oh my gosh, I didn't teach them how to respect. Or they don't clean their room. Oh my gosh, I didn't teach them to. <laughs> yeah, the because um, I, you know, like I said, I worked with you for 10, like over 10 years. You can teach people everything the right way, but it depends on their personality and their style of learning and living it is what it is like they're gonna make their own decisions you, you can teach them correctly um, but people are gonna be people and they're gonna be imperfect and they're gonna live their lives and, and it's you, not a reflection yeah it's not a of reflection us. of you being a bad parent you could be like the most loving supportive parent and your child just ends up being somebody that is opposite of what you taught them so your self-worth can't be determined by your kid's performance in school and in life. Just really um, be a loving and compassionate when they make mistakes and, you know, Perfect. they gotta be resilient. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Jessica. You have a very busy Sunday. Today's family day. Ah, we see, we see. Maybe they might change and, well, we might get together. They might just decide we'll just, home that's, that's why funny. i love how you are so flexible it's like you know what it is it is what it is and be open to anything that comes your way that's what you've taught me because i'm like oh my gosh this is not according to the plan right oh my gosh they didn't send me the link for this interview uh and you're like oh. right has the list of like yes okay yes i lost my list it's okay <laughs> it's a neighbor island like you know what everything's going to be fine no matter what yes you just go with the flow go with the flow thanks Jeff, and i'm sure i will be talking to you soon okay I talk to her every day anyway <laughs> take care thank bye. you bye, bye.